Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about a somewhat obscure topic that has to do with new tone radio intercom systems. And that's RF or radio frequency interference that's caused by other electrical devices in your home. I talked with a customer earlier this week and her complaint or her description of the problem with her 4006 as it turns out to be was that about eight months ago she noticed that her AM radio reception became much stat more staticky and and poorer than it had been in the 25 years that she had lived in the house. She'd been there since it was new. And she lives in a part of Nevada. It's a highly populated area. And she said it's relatively flat. They have pretty good radio reception there. You can pick up most stations really well. And something changed either with her system or with in her area. And she wasn't sure exactly what was going on with it and was interested in seeing about getting it resolved. After asking her a lot of questions, one of the things that came up in the conversation was about eight or nine months ago, prior to her having problems with static and poor AM radio reception, she had had some remodeling done on her house and she had a bunch of recessed light fixtures installed in her kitchen. She wasn't sure whether they were, they, they probably are not incandescent because those you can't really buy much anymore. So they were, they're probably either some type of fluorescent or LED or uh, low voltage lighting of some kind or another. And a lot of those kinds of lights and also the dimmer switches that control them can create a lot of radio frequency interference. So all electrical devices will create some amount of electronic waves that are in the radio frequency band the same as your favorite AM station that you listen to and the intercom itself the master station or the antenna that's run up in the walls and up in the attic or something like that perhaps near where the new recess lighting has been installed will pick up those that radio frequency waves and it's not a desirable thing because it's not the radio station you want to listen to. It's just a random bunch of radio frequency interference. And I thought I would show today kind of how that works. So we're here at the shop. And this is a newly rebuilt 4006. I just finished it like 20 minutes ago and tested it and it all works properly. And I have it hooked up just to a standard new tone antenna just like you have in your home. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and put it on at AM. In 2007, appearing as a pinch hitter at San Diego's And I'll turn it down just a little. And it's on 740. 740 is a reasonably strong AM station uh, here at the shop. It comes in, on a 1 to 10 scale, it comes in usually about an 8. But it's good for this example. If you listen carefully... Reinventing entertainment so you can enjoy it your way. Xfinity, the future of awesome. It comes in reasonably well. There's a little bit of crackle in the background, uh, and that's typical for this area. And that's what I would ex how I would expect it to be here at the shop because that's pretty normal. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate about radio frequency interference is first I'm going to turn on the overhead. Right now I have all the lights off in the in the shop except for the recessed LEDs up above the workbench, and those I know don't create any radio interference because they're very high quality and they were installed properly so they're not a source of any any amount of noise in fact if I turn them off the first four men he faced in the third pets with an RBI you'll have you'll see that it's the same so they're not contributing to the noise we're hearing this is just standard reception for here now I'm going to walk over and turn on the overhead fluorescent lights uh, that light up this half of the lab and you can hear how things change did two innings, give up two runs, five walks. Elsewhere, Dodgers over the break, two to one, is Monte Grandal, pinch hit two run double in the tenth, the game winner in Atlanta. Marlins over the Nats, five to one. Scherzer takes the last five innings. And with the overhead lights on, all of a sudden we have more of a buzzing sound on the station and much more static in the background of the reception. And that's caused by interference with the electronic ballasts that are in the overhead lights. They are good quality ballasts, but it's not uncommon with fluorescent lighting, and we have a lot of it here in the shop, uh, to create radio frequency interference. 
And so this is an example of how that can happen. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you have a serious problem. I'm going to walk over and I'm going to turn on the UV lamps in our UV uh, light box that we use for faceplate rewhitening. And uh, it has two fairly high powered ball electronic ballast assemblies. And you can see what kind of havoc they cause. And now the station is basically unlistenable. Uh, there's so much, there's so much random RF interference from all the ballasts that are on. You can't listen to it. And if we scan ahead or up, what do you think are the most expensive windows that you can get? This is 810. 810 is a 50,000 watt AM station in San Francisco, and you can pretty much hear that on Mars. So. It's the RF noise from the ballast is enough even to interfere with a super strong station like 810. So let me go ahead and turn the ballast off. All right, so this is just an example of the kinds of things that cause poor reception. And this is primarily an AM band problem. FM is not as susceptible to it because it's a much higher frequency than AM is. So that brings up the question, what do you do about it? Well, the rule of thumb is when you have a problem like this, you have to solve the problem at the source of the problem. And the source of the problem is not the intercom system. The source of the problem are the ballast in the fluorescent lights overhead, the ballast in the UV light box. It can also be in your home. It can be dimmer switches. If you have old school dimmer switches, the kinds that we had growing up when I was a kid, where it's a round knob and you push it to turn the light on and then you rotate it to vary the intensity of the light and push it again to turn it off, those are what I call hardware store dimmers. And those are, you know, back in the day, you could buy one of those for like five dollars and those are very very noisy typically uh, modern dimmers are much better and there are companies that make dimmers that are specifically labeled as low noise dimmers and sometimes those will help but if you have a bank of dimmer switches below the master station or adjacent to it on the wall or on the other side of the wall over here on the back side of the wall they can create a lot of interference you can check that by turning the lights on that are controlled by those dimmers and then with the radio playing vary the intensity of the dimmer and listen to see if the noise that the radio picks up varies as you slide the controls up and down or turn the controls or however yours work if it does you have a problem either with the dimmers or with the lights that the dimmers are controlling. A lot of recessed LED lighting can create a lot of RF noise, as do other types of lighting, especially recessed lighting that uses low voltage transformers on each housing. So those are all sources of RF interference. There is no magic filter to add to the intercom to solve this problem. I've been doing this almost for 30 years, and for 30 years, people have been asking me, well, don't you have a filter for it? And as hard as we've tried, we've never been able to come up with the magic filter. Uh, it doesn't exist. You have to solve the problem at the source of the problem, and before you can even try to solve it, you have to try to find the source of the problem, and oftentimes that involves turning circuits off in your house to see which ones are the greatest offenders, and then try to solve the problems uh, at the source. So I just thought it would be kind of interesting to show you how that goes. If you have those kind of problems with your system, you will need to do some investigation to see if you can sort out where the source is and then try different ways to solve it. So that's all for today. It's somewhat of an obscure topic, but it's not an uncommon problem. So I hope you found it a little bit interesting and perhaps a little helpful to you. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that's all for today. See you on the next video.